Whoa, what is going on football fans back at it with another New York Giants video figured I'd do my first six round mock draft of the year for the New York Giants because well we don't have a seventh round pick so I wanted to go over some of the prospects that I could potentially see the New York Giants going after in the later portions of this year's draft of course we all know as Giants fans all the combinations that they could be looking for at five and seven but it's fun to go over some of the prospects that the Giants may be looking at as the draft wears along in terms of need for the New York Giants, we all know what the needs are. Everything. <laughs> I mean, you could, you could point to several different areas on the football team. Obviously, the tackle, the interior offensive line, the tight end. We could certainly add a wide receiver on the defensive side. Linebacker, edge, cornerback, safety. And it's going to be impossible for me to address every need in this draft. So you're going to notice there's one position in this draft that I do not draft that I could certainly see the New York Giants drafting potentially even as early as the first round in this year's draft but you can't always draft for need as the draft wears along a lot of times you're going to go for best available player this happens every year fans look at the you know the needs for the giants i remember in 2000 and i think it was 19 uh everybody seemed to think the giants were certainly going to take a wide receiver they didn't do it they took three offensive linemen because there were players that they liked there and they weren't necessarily in love with the wide receiver position so i tried to do that here i tried to fill in needs but at the same time i look for players that i thought could fit what the giants were looking to do both offensively and defensively that would fill in some of the holes for this football team so we're going to start with the first round and i've already done a first round mock draft for the giants so no surprise here if you watched it i'm going to go with the same two guys that i had going with my first mock draft and that's evan neal now of course this could be a quantity it could potentially be charles cross but the more and more i think about it the more and more i am convinced unless we trade down which i'm sure i'll do in another mock draft scenario if the Giants are staying at five, the more and more I really believe we're going to go tackle here. You know, a lot of Giants fans may seem to think we will wait till seven, and we may. Uh, regardless, I think we're definitely taking tackle with one of those two picks. The reason I think it's more likely we'll go tackle at five is because I think Carolina is a strong shooter to potentially take a tackle at six. They have one of the worst offensive lines in football. Of course, they could go quarterback as well. But here, the Giants get Evan Neal to fall into their laps. Like I said, could easily be Aquanu, could easily be Charles Cross, but I do think one of them are going to drop to us. Here I have Evan Neal. The Giants were at Evan Neal's pro day today, uh, and the guy is a, a ridiculous athlete for his size. The way he's able to move, most people say, you know, he, he appears that he's 50 pounds lighter than his actual weight. I think he weighs 337 pounds. He's six foot seven. Some people worry about the potential injury history due to his size at the NFL level, but there's a guy capable of playing on the right side. He's played it in college and could be a dynamite tackle for the New York Giants. You go out and get Evan Neal. Suddenly you got two great bookend tackles for the future of this football team. My second pick at number seven overall, much like my first mock draft, it's going to be Sauce Gardner. I'm going to continue to say I expect the Giants to trade James Bradbury from everything I've heard. Maybe they won't. And if they do not, this would change. Uh, one name that I would love to take here is Kayvon Thibodeau. I know a lot of Giants fans, myself included, would love that here. I have him off the board. I don't think he's going to get to five or seven. I still think he's going to go in the top three picks of this year's draft. But if he gets to us with one of those two picks, that is certainly a guy that could be on your radar here, along with a guy potentially like Kyle Hamilton. A lot of people have brought him up. And there's several other players that the Giants could be looking at. But Sauce Gardner, to me, makes too much sense if he is there. Uh, and I think he will be. I've gone back and forth. I've seen, the, you know, I, I think the Jets could certainly take him. But if the Jets don't take him, I think he will get to us at seven. I don't really see Carolina taking another cornerback after they took J.C. Horn last year. And Sauce Gardner just fits what we're looking to do on defense to a T. He's got the measurable six foot three, long arm, super athletic, man press coverage. We need a corner like him, especially if we're going to trade away James Bradbury. That will instantly become the biggest need for the New York Giants defense if and when we decide to do that. So I just think it makes too much sense. You get your right tackle, you get your corner. Now we get to the second round. This is where it gets a little bit interesting because you could go so many ways and, and, and we don't know what players are going to drop here. I can see the Giants going edge. I didn't do that. Bonito uh, is, is an edge rusher a lot of people talk about. Could certainly see him being a second round selection here. Had a really good combine. Very athletic and press there, and it saw his draft stock go up. So I could certainly see the Giants going that route. I could see them going wide receiver here, and there's a lot of wide receivers. It's a very deep wide receiver class. Um, a lot of Giants fans would probably scoff at that and say, I don't really want to take an early wide receiver this year, but it is going to be a need for this football team. I mean, you look, we have a lot of injury-prone players. Darius Slayton's probably not going to be in the long-term plans for this team. You could probably say the same thing about Sterling Shepard. So we will need one eventually. Christian Watson's a name people have talked about. That is certainly an area that I thought about going here. I didn't do 
do that. Tight end for me, even though it's a big need, I think it's a bit too early to take a tight end 36th overall. So I did try to fill a need, and I do think this is around the area where he'll get drafted, and I think it's the appropriate area to take a safety. I personally am not in love with taking a safety early in the first round. Similar to where we took McKinney, I think that's an ideal spot to take a, to take a safety prospect if you really like one. And this is a safety prospect that I think complements Xavier McKinney incredibly well. And that's Jaquan Brisker coming out of Penn State. He is an in-the-box safety. I definitely suggest that you guys take a look at some of his highlights on YouTube. The guy is super super uh, nasty. He's a hard hitter at, at the position. Uh, you, you could see him blitzing off the edge of it, up the middle. Uh, definitely decent in coverage, but he's a guy that's going to play in the box. Um, he ran a 4-4-40 at his pro day. Um, and like I said, the thing that's so appealing to me here is the fact that I think he would complement Xavier McKinney so well, and the Giants really wouldn't have to worry about that spot for quite some time if they were to go out there and draft Jaqu uh, Jaquan Brisker. Um, and I think it's an area where BPA kind of meets need. I think it's the ideal spot to take him. And with the departures of, you know, Jabril Peppers and obviously Logan Ryan, the Giants certainly need to fill that void, and they do so uh, with this pick. Next up, at number 37 in the third round, I went with Dylan Parham. He's a bit of a project. Um, he's played tackle. He's also played guard and he's also played center. He projects to be a guard at the NFL level. He's a bit undersized. He was only 285 pounds this year in college. However, he packed on the weight for the combine. He, he measured in at 311 pounds and he ranked in the top 90th percentile in the 40 yard dash, the 10 yard split and the 20 yard split, uh, for an offensive lineman at the combine. So that was impressive. Um, He's played well, like I said, he's played well at multiple positions. He had a 90 PFF grade as a tackle in 2020. This year, he transferred to the guard in which he had a 78 uh, PFF grade. He's 6'2", 313 pounds, at least at the combine. Where he excels when you watch some of his highlights, he's a good run blocker, does a really good job of getting to the second level. People seem to think he needs to work on his pass protection a bit, but when you get to the third round, you're not going to get finished products. The Giants here look for a guy that could be a long-term project, an eventual starter for the football team that could bring some positional versatility. I think it makes sense. Next up, a bit early to take a running back, but I've heard time and time again that the Giants seem to be interested in James Cook. Um, a third-round running back, like I said, a little early, some Giants fans may want to wait till the fourth round. And I think once you get to the third round, you can change these picks around. The guy taking the fourth round, you could easily take in the third round. I think it's just, you know, spotting some names that you think the New York Giants could be interested in. James Cook out of Georgia, of course, the brother of Dalvin Cook, arguably the best running back in football, or one of the best running backs in football. He does have a similar run style, but he's not the same size. He's 190 pounds. Most people feel like he will not be a three-down back at the NFL level, but he runs hard for his size, could be a good pass catcher out of the backfield, and a good complement to Saquon Barkley, and potentially whoever replaces Saquon Barkley uh, in the near future. I do think the New York Giants will address running back at some point in this draft. Third round, maybe a little bit early. Maybe they wait till the fourth or the fifth. But in this mock, I have them taking James Cook at number 81 overall. That's now going to bring us to number 112. And now we fill out another need. A gaping hole in this roster right now that the Giants need to fulfill is the tight end. I mean, after all, we lost every tight end we have. I think that uh, Kate Otten, who's another prospect that you've heard that the New York Giants are interested in, is the type of tight end that they're going to look for. He's kind of a well-rounded tight end, not not a guy kind of like Evan Ingram, who's known strictly as a pass catcher. Otten's a guy that is a capable blocker. He's 250 pounds, and he went to Washington, and Washington, he's 6'5", uh, 250. Washington has been a university. They haven't, you know, had the greatest tight ends, like Iowa, for example, but they've had, f I, think it's, I think I read three, uh, tight ends drafted inside the fourth rounder earlier since 2014, and he will be the fifth. I do think he'll be going uh, fourth, rather. I do think he'll be going no later than the fourth round. That is where the New York Giants drafting him. If you look at his stats, you're not going to be blown away. He caught for 250 yards this past year, but when you watch the game film, when you watch the highlights, he is a pretty good route runner, and he does have quick twitch ability where he's able to maneuver defenders. That's what I see. That's what stands out to me when I watch some of the highlights. And he is a capable blocker. Um, from what I've read, at least from scouts, they say at times he gets out-muscled, needs to improve in that area. He's versatile as well. You can line him up in several uh, different formations at the tight end position. But I just think it's such a big need, um, and I think it's an ideal fit for the New York Giants. So I had them going Kate Otten out of Washington. Definitely check him out as well. This next prospect... 
I, I don't I haven't heard much about him. I did a little bit of research because I was looking for coverage linebackers. That's something that I think the New York Giants desperately need. He's probably a bit of a project. He is undersized. He's six foot one, two hundred and twenty eight pounds out of Wisconsin. But when I looked at him, Jojo Doman um, is a pretty impressive prospect. And when you watch some of his highlights, he's got a good nose for the ball. Impressed at the combine. He's moved up a little bit in these mock drafts. Could go anywhere from round four to six, probably. I've seen him go as high as the back end of the third. Um, here I had him going to the Giants at number 147. And it's a need. We talk about it all the time that the New York Giants need versatility at the linebacker position. We have not had a great coverage linebacker in a really long time. JoJo Doman could potentially be that for the New York Giants. He's also played some safety at the collegiate level as well. Some people seem to think he could line up in the box and seems to be the type of guy that could potentially cover a tight end. Um, and he, he's another, and again, why, was uh, Nebraska rather used him in a variety of ways. They used him up, you know, blitzes up the middle, off the edge. So definitely check him out as well. Could be a good fit. Next guy, I'm going to go wide receiver here. And this may be too late. Maybe a late third round pick, fourth round pick. But a guy I have my eye on. And a guy that I think the New York Giants could potentially be interested in. The wide receiver prospect out of Notre Dame, Kevin Austin Jr. Kind of reminds me, when you, when you read the scouting report and you watch him a bit, a little bit of Darius Slayton coming out of college out of Auburn. Um, and a lot of Giants fans are going to say, oh, no. But at the end of the day, Darius Slayton was a fifth-round pick. Giants got pretty good value. A lot of times, fifth-round picks don't even make it in the NFL. He was kind of underutilized at Notre Dame last year. Only had 48 catches, but for 888 yards, seven touchdowns. He's six foot two, 200 pounds. He ran a 4 3 9 40. Um, I, I, I've read conflicting reports on that. Uh, somewhere I read 443, somewhere else I read 439. The book on him is he's got the speed, he's got the height, limited route tree. Similar to a guy like Darius Slayton. And the other thing, also similar to a guy like Darius Slayton that I read, he does struggle in terms of coming up with contested catches. Something he will need to work on at the NFL level, but a guy with perhaps some upside later in the draft that the New York Giants could potentially target at the wide receiver position. And then finally, my last pick in the sixth round, I got the Giants going with a center. Um, my second interior offensive lineman, a lot of Giants fans may feel like this could be overkill, being that we signed, I think it was four interior offensive linemen in free agency, but my, my guess is they're not all going to make the roster. Some of those guys are going to be camp bodies. Um, and there's a depth piece later in the draft, that's Luke Wattenberg, he's six foot five, three hundred pounds. He started all forty eight games at the collegiate level, so he's durable. Um, he's a good, very good zone blocker, and he's very athletic for a center. Some people worry about his height. He's a little tall for a center. Generally, you want your centers to be lower to the ground, six three, six four, uh, maybe six two. We did see Nick Gates play the position, however, so that is one con that people talk about. Um, and he needs to refine his game a bit, but. You're going to get that when you're drafting later uh, in, the, in the draft. He's also capable of pulling. Um, so, yeah, there you have it. Uh, I had the Giants getting two interior offensive linemen. I, got, I had them taking a first-round tackle, a cornerback, a safety. We filled some needs. The one glaring omission in this mock draft, which I'm sure in others I will draft it relatively early, did not select an edge rusher. The way I look at the edge rusher position for the Giants, they need a dominant one, and I'm all for it. I would love for the New York Giants to find their dominant one. But after round one, Maybe round two, you're probably not going to find that. We have a bunch of guys on this team that are kind of second, third, fourth round type prospects. I would love for the Giants to be able to get Kayvon Thibodeau in this mock. I didn't have it happening, so I elected to really fill out that secondary. I got the cornerback. I got the safety. Got myself a coverage linebacker. Um, so that's the route that I went. These are just some prospects that I'm interested in, and maybe the New York Giants will be interested as well. The reason I picked James Cook and Otten is because I've heard the New York Giants have spent a lot of time researching those prospects. But like I said, I'll probably have another one up in a week or two going over some of the other prospects that I could see the New York Giants uh, going after, going over some scenarios where the New York Giants trade down. There's a lot of things that the Giants could do in this upcoming drip. We got a lot of picks. I still think we're going to have another pick when we ultimately trade James Bradbury. As always, guys, if you like what you watch, please subscribe, drop a comment, maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.